Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. On today's show, I'm going to talk about Jamal Adams, Tyrell Williams. We'll talk around some trades about both of those players. And then we'll dive into some more news, even around Martavis Bryant. I'll talk to you about Nick O'Leary. But first, I got to dive into Jamal Adams. And is he a perfect fit on the Raiders? This one's for Chucky Heads. Believe it, baby. And it's also kind of a, well, no crap. So, I saw something out there from Vincent Bontior of the Las Vegas Review Journal, and he basically said that the Raiders should go out and pick up the phone and call the New York Jets and go get Jamal Adams. The issue with this comment is every single NFL team, Jamal Adams would be a perfect fit for. The insert team name, Jamal Adams fits. Why? He's one of the best young players in the National Football League. 25 years old, he'd be a leader on and off the field. And when I think of what a Raider represents, I do think of Jamal Adams, a player that can bring that toughness and would fit very, very well, honestly, next to a guy like Jonathan Abram. The issue here is like, hey, I'm going to show you the stats. They're pretty, but you still got to give up a first and probably a third round pick. At least that's what the Jets initially asked for. On top of that, you're going to have to probably pay him top dollar. Now, some reports came out that he wanted to make about $20 million. I don't think that's personally going to happen. I think he's going to be a little bit more around the $17, $18 million figure, in my opinion. But when you have a player who can do it all, right? I mean, you're having a guy who has over 100 tackles, six and a half sacks, which is pretty crazy. Davion Clowney would love those sack numbers. And then pass breakups, interceptions, he can just, just about do it all. The reason why I don't know if it's all that likely that he's going to come to our team is because, well, I gave it zero chalky heads last week. And when you talk to, I shouldn't say when you talk to, Jamal Adams basically has eight teams that he wants to go to, right? Seven came from uh, Schefter, and then he threw in another team like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The issue with that is, and as much as I think that he would be a great fit with this Raiders team, if it's not a destination that he wants to go to, that either means two things. Either we have to give up even more draft capital, or you're going to have to pay him even more money to get him come there. And I don't know if that's what we want. But here's the exact quote from Vincent Bonsignor on trading for Jamal Adams. If you're Raiders head coach John Gruden and general manager Mike Mayock, the next call you make has to be to the Jets general manager Joe Douglas to express interest in making a trade for Adams. The second part of that quote is, by every measure, Adams is a perfect fit on the Raiders, promising young defensive roster. He is that rare breed of a player who combines great talent with the ability to be a difference maker, slot alongside second year safety Jonathan Abram. So, I wanted to have some fun here, right? Let's just say he is slotted next to second-year Jonathan Abram. And I do think that he would end up playing free safety because Abram is a little bit more of that strong safety role. The issue here is, though, we already went out and signed Demarius Randall. I'm not saying Demarius Randall is better than Adam. I am saying, though, I don't know if it's actually the biggest need that we have on our team. And as much as I think this is a fun idea, how exactly does this happen? So... We're going to rewind about maybe like two, three weeks when all this Adam stuff first kind of came out. The Jets were saying, well, we want a first and a third round pick. So, uh, this is just an idea. The Jets were to receive a 2021 first round pick and our third round pick. So, what I wanted to do is try to take it a next step, right? Because one of the players that I'm going to talk about on today's show is Tyrell Williams. So, how about this? Would you make this trade? And I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. So the Jets, they received Tyrell Williams and a 2021 first-round pick. The Raiders, they get one of the best young safeties in the National Football League. So if you would make this trade, I want you to type your Y for yes. If you wouldn't, I want you to type your N for no. So my goal here at the beginning of the month was to get to 49,000 subscribers by the end of June. I still need like 600 more. So I'm asking you. If you're not already a subscriber, I want you to hit that sub button, or you can see the link below me. It'll also be in the comment section on the live video. I want you to send it to as many Raider fans as you possibly know. Let's get this to 49K. Let's keep it rolling here, because I'm really excited for the 2020 season in Las Vegas. Let's go to the next store here, where it's Tyrell Williams trade. This one's from Bleacher Report, and I'm going to give it only one shucky head. So basically what Bleacher Report did, they listed one player that every NFL team should go out and trade. The player that they listed for the Las Vegas Raiders, as you can see, was Tyrell Williams. The reasons why that they said that the Raiders should move on from Williams, you already drafted Ruggs, Bowden, Edwards, you signed Nelson Aguilar as well. 
And despite his uh, solid beginning to the season, he has dealt with injuries, and he's still kind of battling some injuries, right? So Tyrell, the first five games of 2019, we know that he was solid. And when I think about, hey, how would I possibly spin a trade where I would try to get rid of Tyrell, I would say, if you look at what he did his first five games, if you look at what maybe if he would have been healthy, this is what he could have done. Now, don't get me wrong, 16 touchdowns is a little bit of a stretch. Do I think he's going to be a good player? Absolutely. But the real issue here is if a team does want to go out and trade for Tyrell Williams, you've got to pay him his base salary plus his, plus his workout, okay? So Tyrell in 2020. Technically, we've already paid him $11 million, right? Now, he'll make another hundred k in, uh, for his bonus. But if you go out and trade him, the team that trades for him, they then have to pay that money. So what I wanted to show here on screen is it's not just, you know, trade it for Tyrell for this year. It's if a team wants to go out and get Williams, this is what they're going to have to end up paying him, plus an extra, like, hundred k each year. That's an extra idea, okay? So if I am trying to trade away Tyrell, because that's what Bleacher Report thinks that we should do, here are five teams where I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to call. I'm going to call the San Francisco 49ers because Debo Samuel, he's battling some injuries right now after breaking his leg. He's out, what, three to four months? The Green Bay Packers, they didn't address any of the wide receiver needs in the draft. And I think Aaron Rodgers would at least like a 1B type receiver. The Miami Dolphins, I think they could use an extra player next to Devontae Parker, Mike Gusecki. The New York Giants, I think they need another receiver for Daniel Jones. And then the Washington Redskins. They need all the help they can get at the receiver position. So I want you to think about this, okay? Would you trade Tyrell Williams for a third-round pick? If you're like, yes, Mitch, I would trade Tyrell Williams for a third-round pick, I want you to type one for yes. If you're like, no way, I'm not going to do that, I want you to type two for no. So Hero Fall Time says two for no. I am starting to see a lot of twos come in. Glenn Martinez is typing his one. Uh, but majority of the votes coming in right now on our live show are coming across as two. If you want to know what I would do, hit me up on Instagram. I'm at MitchellRen365. So today's sponsor, I'm trying to show you guys that I like to have fun, okay? And I saw these shirts, the 4th of July, it is right around the corner. And I, uh, I don't know, I like to be festive. And I like to go red, white, and blue. And you can see it below me, red, white, and hey, you. These shirts are only $24.99. I have a <laughs> Speedo, actually, that is American flag. And honestly, I'm probably going to wear it. But I'm also going to wear something that matches with it. If you need a shirt for the 4th of July, if you want to continue to rep your team, you can see down below. It's chatsports.com slash Raiders 4. It's also in the comments. It'll also be in the description. If you get the shirt, send it to me. I like fireworks, and uh, I like repping my Raiders. Let's now go to the next story here on the Raiders Report. And are they interested in Japanese kicker, okay, Toshiki Sato? And I hopefully I pronounced that right. So originally the report was that the Raiders and the Dallas Cowboys were showing interest in Sato. For me, though, I'm telling you that the Raiders are not going to go out and sign him. That's why it's zero chucky head, tuck rule, tuck that. Now, sure, he'd be the first Japanese player in the NFL, which is obviously an accomplishment. And he apparently worked out in March. I saw some reports out there that it was with the Raiders. I personally don't think that's true. I think it was more of just like a general workout. Now, here's the exact quote from Sato. The Cowboys and the Raiders are interested. I am waiting for an offer. The Cowboys might be difficult since they have three kickers and one is a big contract. But the Raiders only have two. I think there's a chance I could get an invite if those two don't do well at the upcoming, or at upcoming camp. So he's talking about Daniel Carlson, and he's talking about Dominic Eberle. So right now, Carlson is currently our starter. And I know that he struggled a little bit last year, 19-26, to 26, but I think he was really solid for the Raiders, at least, in 2018. If I put my money on who's going to be the kicker for the Raiders, I do think it's going to be Carlson. But let's say Carlson does struggle. I am also a big fan of Eberle, who's coming out of Utah State, was born in Germany, and when you look at a lot of his numbers in college, the one that – Blows my mind, and I understand that the extra point in college is closer than what it is in the NFL. But 167 out of 167, that's impressive. He really does have a big leg as well. So does Sato. Apparently, long is like 58 yards, which is a it's a record in Japanese Football League. I can't remember his team name, but hey, it's all good. So, Japanese kicker, I believe he played for the IBM uh, Big Blue. That was the team name. So, that's off the top of my head. So, we'll ask this question here. Who will be the Raiders kicker this upcoming season? 
you can go out and you can type Sato. I personally don't think that's going to happen. But what I want you to do, either type Daniel Carlson, Dominic Eberle. Let me know who you think the Raiders kicker is going to be. My vote, I've already told you, it's going to end up being Daniel Carlson. Let's all get into some NFL news. This kind of happened yesterday, and Tom and I talked about it on NFL Daily. If you haven't subscribed to our main chat sports channel, please do, youtube.com slash TV. So Martavis Bryant has applied for reinstatement. And as much as I think that he's a very talented player, as much as I think that, you know, when fully healthy and when he's got all of his crap together, he is an incredible player. But he was suspended indefinitely uh, in 2018 and has never played a full 16-game season. Now, you can go look at his numbers, and some of his numbers are very impressive, right? Height, weight. I remember when he first came out, he was actually getting comparisons to Randy Moss. I don't think I'd go that far, but I know a lot of people are like, Mitch, would the Raiders be a potential fit for him? What I, all I want you to do is look at his numbers from 2018 with the Raiders. If that's the kind of player that you want, and remember he hasn't played really in a whole year and a half, 27 targets, 19 catches, 256 yards. Like, sure, it's in limited fashion, but that's also what you're going to get with Martavis Bryant. So before I give you my answer, should the Raiders go out and bring or go out and sign Bryant? I want you to type S for sign, or I want you to type T for pass. So right now in our live video, we got over 300 people watching, and most of y'all, from what I see, Joey Ross, Liam Zeever, uh, King Higgins type in B, but then Larry, he's typing S for sign. That's what we do here at the Raiders Report. So should the Raiders go out and sign Martavis Bryant? I say no, so I'm going to give this one four chucky heads that they should stay away from Martavis Bryant because as much as I think that he's talented, I don't trust him in Las Vegas, and this year the Raiders actually have a lot of talent on the offensive side of the football, especially at the receiver position. Some of y'all give me the argument, hey, Mitch, he's fast. He'd be able to stretch the field. My next argument would be so can Henry Ruggs, so can Rico Gafford. If you're telling me to pick between Martavis, Brian, and Rico Gafford, I'm going to take Rico Gafford. So the fact that he hasn't played since 2018, that worries me a little bit. Is he going to be healthy? Also, weed's not legal in Las Vegas or Nevada. So I'm going to say I'm going to respectfully pass on Martavis Bryant. The other reason why I'm going to pass on Brian is because he's not the only receiver basically this month or last week that has reapplied for reinstatement. It's also Josh Gordon. And if you're telling me, would I rather take a bet on Josh Gordon or, Mar or Martavis Bryant, who I think we would both agree, are all kind of dealing with the same issue, I'm going to gamble my money on Josh Gordon. No offense to Martavis Bryant. I would type my JG because I think he's the better receiver. I think there's a higher upside, and we've just seen more from Josh Gordon, not just recently, but also throughout his entire career. Now, maybe I just have high hopes for both these players, but hey, we'll see. So if you guys do want to go to a Raiders game this year, really any NFL game, I do think it's at least be, be vigilant. Let's be smart about what we're doing, where we're going, who we're hanging out with. An easy way to stay safe is by going to chatsports.com slash Raiders face cover okay this one ships in two days so you order it it'll ship in two business days these are going very very fast though i'm just going to be honest with you so if you want to make sure that you get this one specifically i would say hey go in the description go in the comments order it now but if you want to get it today it's chatsports.com slash raiders face cover so on my friday show i started doing something at the end but we kind of ran a little bit long last week so i just kind of wanted to say hey remember two things I do a Friday happy hour show, and last week's challenge was just to make someone smile. This week, I want you to all send me your Raiders tattoos on Instagram, at MitchellRen365. So make someone smile. My friend Jordan said, hey, man, I went to Charles Woodson's final home game with my dad and my brother. That's a picture of them. I think that's awesome. I think that's what football is all about. This is what Raider Nation is all about. It's great memories. I also have this picture. So Jessica, shout out to Pablo and Jessica Gutierrez. Jessica DMs me on Instagram, so she totally just slid in the DM. She's like, hey, Pablo absolutely loves your show. If you could put this picture of us on it, he would absolutely love that. So smiles all around. So smiles was last week's challenge. This week's challenge, I want you to post your Raiders tattoo. So if you're on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, Twitter, wherever, post a picture 
and tag me at Mitchell Renz 365 Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my favorites, and then I'm going to put them on my Raiders Friday happy hour show. So if you want to see if you made the cut, if you want to see if your ink got posted on the show, tune in Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern time for Raiders happy hour. The last story here, and it's around Nick O'Leary because he's hoping to return to the NFL. And for those of you uh, that do follow the show, back on May 19th, there was a report to come out that he retired. That's actually not true. He just was sent to the IR. So basically what happened was he had surgery to clear a 100% heart block. It's like this man is luckily to be alive. So he is expected to make a full recovery. He does want to play football next season. And according to O'Leary, the Raiders are going to at least leave the door open for him. So as long as he's healthy and he's in football shape, the Raiders obviously showed some interest in him this year in free agency. So here's the quote from O'Leary. I feel better than I did before. I've got to be on blood thinners for six months to a year. Wow. That's really the only reason now why I can't play football if I got cut. So he's saying basically if he got cut, they said that would be the biggest problem and it wouldn't be able to stop the bleeding. So I wish Nick O'Leary a fast and speedy recovery, and this would be an unbelievable story if he was able to go from having a 100% heart blockage, having surgery, and then basically an entire year later, able to play football again. That's pretty crazy. If you've made it this far in the video and you haven't yet, hit that sub button. Raider Nation, what's going on? Is this the number one Raiders channel on YouTube? For Chucky Heads, believe it, baby. And if you haven't already, subscribe right here. I'm giving you Chucky Heads news, rumors, Raider Nation rumors, and look at this. I'm making your life easier. Check out my next video. Thanks for watching, and go Raiders.